Hello students, welcome back to Physics with Sapter. Now you are watching IGCSE Physics Past Paper Solution Series. If you are facing any problem in IGCSE Physics, so you are at the right place. Here you can find the solutions of your problem. So follow the playlist of the channel and keep in touch Physics with Sapter for better results in exam. Today we are going to solve paper 2 solutions on topic electrical quantities and circuits. So let's start the solutions of the day. Question number one. What is the unit of electric power? And you have four options. Remember few things regarding power. In general, we write the power is equals to rate of doing work. Work major in joules and time major in seconds. Joules per second. And that is equals to what? So, SI unit of the power is what? So, now look at the options. A ampere, not correct. Joules, cross this one. Volts, not possible. What? Correct option. D is the right answer here. Question number two. What is the circuit symbol for a variable resistor? The students, you know well, every electrical component has a particular symbol. In this type of question, you need to learn their symbols. So look at the option, which one is the symbol of variable resistor? Option A. This is the symbol of fuse. Option B. This is the right answer. This is the variable resistor. But look at the others. This is a symbol of a heater and the last is used for thermistor. So option B is the right answer. That is the symbol of variable resistor. Question number 3. 12.0 ohm resistors and 6.0 ohm resistor are connected in parallel. Another 6.0 ohm resistor is then connected in series with the parallel combination. What is the combined resistance of all three resistors? Look at the diagram. This is battery. You can mark the polarity plus and minus like this. Current always flow from positive to negative as conventional. When current reach at this point, then current divide into two parts through R12 and 6 ohm resistors. After that, current recombine at this point and enter to 6 ohm resistors, then return to the battery like this. So, first of all, if you want to calculate the combined resistance of the circuit combination, select these two resistors. And they are in parallel combination. How to identify the components are in parallel combination? That is very simple. Look at the current enter from this part, then divide. When the current divide, then components are in parallel. These two resistors are in parallel, and you need to calculate first their result. How to do that? If you have two re resistors parallel and they are resultant, you can find like this. Let's suppose this is RA. The formula is very simple, product of these resistors like 12.0 times 6, then divide with the sum of these resistors. Twelve times six gives uh, 72 and 12 plus six gives 18. Then divide 72 with 18, we get 4. Now this 4 ohm resistor is connected in series with 6 ohm resistor. So combined resistance you can find like this. 6 ohm resistor plus this 4 ohms. And we get finally 10 ohms. So look at the option. A is 8, not correct. B is 10, right option, check the other, C15, cross this, 
D24 not correct. Option B is the right answer here. Question number 4. The circuit shows a 12 volt battery connected to a lamp of resistance 3.0 ohms. How much energy is transferred to the surrounding by the lamp in 2.0 minutes? Look at the diagram. Battery of 12 volt connected with the lamp and uh, we need to calculate energy transferred. The formula for energy transfer it's very simple. E energy is equals to power into times. But for power you have three relation. Power is equals to V times I. You can calculate power by using V square over R. And P is equals to I square times R. In this question, you have V is equals to 12 volt, R is equals to 3.0 ohms, and time is equals to 2 minutes, or you can write is equals to 120 seconds. The formula for energy we are going to use here power times T. So look at this formula. Power is equal to V square over R and you know V and R. So we are going to use this formula power V square over R times T. Now you can substitute the number V is 12. Make it is squared. Divided by R that is 3. Multiply by time 120. Finally, we get 5760 joules. And now look at the option A is 48 joule, not correct. B 96, cross this one. C 2880 joules, wrong answer. And D 5760 joule, that is the right option. D is the right answer here. Question number 5. Four pieces of metal wires of the same materials are connected in turn between points P and Q in the circuit. The table gives the diameter and the length of the wires. Look at this diagram. This is cell, section P and Q. And for the major water current, we have an ammeter. The question is uh, in which wire is the current largest and you have four options in this column diameter of wires are given and second length you have. What is the relation of resistance with diameter or length? Remember this the resistance of wire is proportional to its length and inversely proportional with the cross sectional area. You know well the shape of a wire is cylindrical, so it is very clear a long wire gives a high resistance, a thick wire or it has a large cross sectional area gives low resistance. So resistance is proportional to the length of the wire and inversely proportional to its cross sectional area. And we need to check the value. So, diameter and area, you know well, area is equals to pi times r squared n. d by 2 is equal like this, a is equals to pi over 4 times d square. So, area and diameter are proportional. If you need the largest current, then what we need, you need a diameter which is large in size. So look at the option in A, diameter is 
length is 1.0 meter second diameter is 0 0.10 millimeter length 2.0 meter c diameter 0 0.20 millimeter length 1.0 meter d 0 0.20 millimeter diameter and 2.0 meter length we need a small length and large diameter for largest current. So look at the small length and large diameter option number C 0 0.20 millimeter and length 1.0 millimeter. Option C is the right answer here. Question number 6. The resistance of a component in a circuit is found using an ammeter and a voltmeter. How are the ammeter and the voltmeters connected? Remember the rule if you want to calculate potential and current through a component, then how to use a voltmeter and ammeter with that component. Let's suppose this is cell connected with a lamp and you want to calculate the potential across the lamp and current through this lamp. Remember one thing, voltmeter is always connected with parallel like this, parallel with the component and ammeter in series always. You can connect this side or either this side, not an issue. Now check the option, option A, the voltmeter and ammeter in parallel with the component, cross this one. The voltmeter and ammeter in series with the component, not possible, both are in series. The voltmeter in parallel is true with the component and the ammeter in series with the component, correct option, check the last one. The voltmeter in series, not correct and M meter in parallel with the component, cross this one. Option C is the right answer here. The volt meter in parallel with the component always and the M meter in series with the component. Question number seven. The table gives data for four different electrical devices. Which device develops the greatest power? In this column, you have name of devices, car headlight, cooling fan, electric spark, generator and mains lamp. Second column, voltage and third column, current. To calculate the power, we use this simple formula, voltage times current. So, multiply voltage with current one by one. Car headlight. 12 volt multiplied by 3.0 ampere. When you multiply 12 with 3, we get 36. Cooling fan. 110 multiply 0 0.40 ampere. 110 multiply 0.4, then we get 44. For electric spark, 400 kilowatt multiply 0 0.10 milliampere. 400 for kilo you write thousand. Then 0 0.1 milliamp means 10 raised to the power minus 3. When you write these numbers and multiply, finally we get 40. For main lamps, 240 multiplied by 0 0.2, 240 multiply 0 0.2, then we get 48. We need to calculate which device develop the greatest power, so you can see 36, 44, 40 and 48, so option D is the right answer here.
Thank you very much for watching this video. I suggest you follow the playlist of the channel in that you can find all the lessons you need in your IGCSE physics. So keep watching physics with Sabdar for better results in exam. See you in the next lesson.